the megalodon shark roamed the oceans, scaring and chewing everything to pieces long after the dinosaurs were wiped out by the great meteorite. We know that it was the largest and most brutal predator that ever lived, as well as the biggest shark. It was the king of all seas, swimming freely between most parts of the ocean. But then, about two and a half million years ago, the last of its kind disappeared from Earth forever leaving only their huge teeth to be found by modern archaeologists. At first, scientists thought it was a mass marine extinction that happened around the time that caused the megalodon to expire. They believe a supernova exploded some 150 light-years from Earth, and its radiation reached our planet, changing its climate. Well, this could have happened. When a star explodes, it gives off so much energy that it goes for hundreds and even thousands of light-years in all directions. If some of that heat struck our planet, it could have warmed it up, making life impossible for lots of animal species, including the megalodon. But then, in 2019, a group of researchers found something weird. The fossils left over from the monster sharks dated back to an earlier period. That could mean they went extinct before the supernova. A new explanation had to be devised, and it came from an unexpected source – the great white sharks. At the peak of their evolutionary career, the megalodons were apex predators, meaning they had no rivals among the other ocean hunters. Their favorite prey were whales and other marine mammals, and they could even hunt down smaller sharks. Not only were they huge, reaching over 60 feet in length and 50 tons in weight, but they also had the strongest bite in the world. Nothing that had a fight with a meg could go away unscathed. An important note. Most of what we know about the megalodon comes from their teeth, because they were the only bony remains left after their extinction. Sharks are mostly cartilage, so they have little bone in their skeleton. Lots of cartilage makes them agile and flexible, as well as allows them to open their mouths to enormous width. At some point, sharks also develop protruding jaws to have a better grip on their prey, something most obvious in the modern goblin shark. Their teeth, however, had to be tougher than cartilage, so they evolved into a sort of tooth factory. Sharks have rows upon rows of pointy sharp teeth, usually directed inwards like hooks, which get worn out pretty quickly. Then when no longer needed, they fall off, making way for new ones. A single shark can replace all the teeth in its jaws as many as 50 times in its lifetime. Now, the megalodon is usually described as a sort of gigantic version of a great white shark. This is a common mistake, though, made because they were thought to be related. In fact, the meg looked more like a modern bull shark. It had a short snout, a flat lower jaw, and long and massive pectoral fins that supported its weight. And what's more important, the ancestors of today's great whites existed at the same time as the megalodon. With great size comes great clumsiness, though. Although the meg was huge and powerful, it was also not as nimble as the smaller and quicker great white sharks. Researchers believe that great whites actually rivaled with the megalodon for food and were often more successful hunters thanks to their agility. They couldn't fight the meg openly, but were fast enough to get the prey the meg had marked for itself and steal it. There's currently a very limited amount of megalodon fossils. Shark skeletons are made of cartilage, which doesn't fossilize very well. So, that means almost all that remains of the mighty meg are its teeth, which have been found on every continent except for Asia and Antarctica. Given that its fossilized teeth are everywhere, scientists have gathered that the megalodon traveled throughout the world. Using these fossils as a guide, Scientists have tried to put a picture together of what this giant predator actually looked like and how it lived. Many of the fossils have been found on Shark Tooth Hill near Bakersfield, California. This is a popular site where people can dig for teeth while wearing protective gloves. Although some shark teeth have been buried for ages, they can still be sharp enough to cut through the skin. Speaking of teeth… The name itself says it all. Megalodon means big tooth. Most of its teeth were about 4 to 5 inches long, but the largest tooth ever found was 7.48 inches and it was discovered in Peru. With a rare size like that, these fossils can be very valuable. A 7-inch high-quality megalodon tooth can be sold for up to $50,000. 
But if you have a small tooth in your collection, don't expect to get a large amount of cash for it. Small Megalodon teeth tend to be valued quite low. Those teeth weren't just super massive. In order to feast regularly on large prey, the Meg had an impressive set of 276 feet that sat in five rows in its mouth. Most fossilized teeth that have been recovered show a significant amount of wear on the tips, and some have had the tips completely broken off from biting on the bones of its prey. All those teeth arranged in five rows served as a backup system so that the Megalodon would never run out. As soon as it lost a tooth, another one would replace it within 48 hours. That way, this massive predator could feed his insatiable appetite and munch on prey non-stop. Megalodons also had an incredible sense of smell. It's often said that sharks can smell a drop of blood across the ocean. This is not a myth, it's true, though it's a little exaggerated. Sharks have a great sense of smell, and they can detect blood from a quarter of a mile away. So before you go swimming, make sure you have no open wounds or scratches. This will not only protect you, but also other people swimming on the beach. When a megalodon picks up the smell of blood, it switches to hunting mode. From this point on, the shark probably won't be scared away by anything. Now take a look at this fishing glitter. It shines and flashes with different colors. Like other fish, a megalodon would probably pay attention to this kind of stuff. So take off all your jewelry before you go swimming. Otherwise, you might just become the human version of fishing glitter. Imagine that you're scuba diving and you're looking at a beautiful coral reef. Colorful fish are swimming all around. Then suddenly, all the reef-dwelling folks swim off or hide. Within a second, the reef is empty. This is a clear sign that a large predator has appeared somewhere nearby. And the words big predator in the aquatic world mean only one thing, a shark. So, get out of there! Here's the best way to protect yourself from a megalodon attack. It's the simplest and most obvious one, but people still ignore it. That's right, it's a sign. If you go to the beach and see a shark sign, don't even think about going in the water. They're already there, and they're just waiting for someone to dive in. But let's imagine that you've ignored all the warnings and signs and decided to go swimming. You suddenly hear people screaming from the beach. Someone spotted a giant fin poking out of the water. The fin is moving in your direction, and you need to decide what to do. So how can you protect yourself if the Megalodon attacks you? First of all, stay calm. Yes, I know we're talking about a giant shark, but if you start panicking and hitting the water with your hands, it'll only attract its attention. Try to reach a boat or a group of people. Do it as calmly as possible. If you're completely alone, you could try not moving at all. Usually, sharks try to bite people. If it's a regular shark, there's a chance it won't be too serious. Once it's had a taste, the normal shark will probably decide to leave you alone. That's right, they actually don't find us very appetizing. But you won't have this kind of luck with a megalodon. Its jaws are so big that it can swallow you whole. So staying put is not an option. But if you encounter a megalodon in shallow water, you still have a chance of surviving. Because it's so enormous, the meg has problems maneuvering, especially in this kind of water. So if it misses with its first strike, it'll have to make a second run at you, just like a pilot trying to land a plane. This will give you time to get to the shore and to safety. This is going to be a very unusual match, but I bet it'll also be spectacular and intense. In the left corner, we have Megalodon. This species went extinct about 3 million years ago, but there are good reasons why it's now a legendary animal. It's the biggest shark that ever existed, and it was a super powerful predator in its time. And a round of applause for our contender in the right corner, Titanoboa. This one's way bigger than any other snake. It lives in the swamps of Colombia, and it's the real boss of the area. Titanoboa can eat absolutely any animal it decides to hunt, and it faces no competition. It can swallow a giant turtle or even a crocodile. 
It looks like a modern boa, but behaves like an anaconda. And that's a very scary mix. But can it stop a giant shark? Let's start by looking at their sizes. We still don't know about Megalodon's exact size, because the only remains of them that have survived are just fossilized backbones and teeth. But scientists generally think this monster was about 50 feet long. So it wasn't just the biggest shark that ever existed, but also one of the biggest fish of its time. Its closest rival is the modern whale shark, but they're only about 40 feet. Hmm. The giant titanoboa got so big thanks to a lucky coincidence. Snakes are cold-blooded animals, so they need a warm climate to live and grow in. Northeastern Colombia is perfect. It was about 90 degrees when Titanoboa was alive. This helped it grow to an incredible 42 feet in length. Titanoboa could easily swallow the longest snake registered in the Guinness Book of Records, which is only about 25 feet long. And that's a big gulp! So we have 50 feet versus 42. The first point goes to Megalodon. What about weight? Titanoboa is about 2,500 pounds. That's heavier than a small car, including the passengers. <laughs> but it might be even heavier if you run into Titanoboa after it's had lunch. In that case, you can add a few hundred pounds more from the turtle or the alligator that it just swallowed. If you put Titanoboa on some very large scales, you'd need five giant anacondas on the other side to balance them out. But Megalodon is an incredible 50 times heavier than Titanoboa. The average adult female weighs between 27 and 59 tons. That's as much as an empty Boeing 737 airplane. And that's without carry-on luggage either. Luckily enough, Megalodon can't fly. So obviously, Megalodon wins in the weight category. That's one more point to the ancient shark. Although having such a large weight makes it difficult for the shark to move, and also means it's a little clumsy. Which leads us to our next category, speed and agility. Megalodon can swim at about 16 feet per second. That's enough to make it the ultimate predator. But it's still slower than plenty of other species. If Megalodon was swimming in a pool and Usain Bolt was running along next to it, he would be twice as fast. His top speed is almost 40 feet per second. Now, a sailfish, which is the fastest sea creature, can reach about 100 feet per second. Megalodon's size and weight make it turn really slowly, just the same as a large truck. So when it attacks, the shark has only one chance to strike. If it misses, it has to go around for a second attempt. This gives its prey more than enough time to run away. Titanoboa isn't that fast either, especially on land. But when the giant snake is in the water, it can swim at a speed of up to 12 miles per hour. Not much, but enough for it to escape from Megalodon if it needs to. It's learned to swim so well because water is its main hunting ground. And because Titanoboa is a snake, duh, it also has incredible mobility. It can wriggle around and change direction very quickly. So it can easily dodge Megalodon's bite. So here's the first point for Titanoboa. The score is 2 to 1 in favor of Megalodon. Next section, fighting skills. Megalodon is incredibly smart. It can change tactics depending on what kind of prey it's hunting. Scientists have found teeth markings from Megalodon on some whale fossils. These show that the giant sharks aim their bites at their prey's vital body parts to take them out quickly. Other remains of Megalodon's victims have multiple fractures. This is because Megalodon performs a super powerful ram attack that can knock almost anything out. In fact, this 50-ton beast can easily smash through concrete walls. So Megalodon's opponents don't really stand a chance. Some of them prefer to first damage the tails and fins of the whale they're hunting. This stops it from escaping, letting the huge predator finish off its defenseless victim. Now, what can Titanoboa do in response? The giant snake isn't poisonous, but this doesn't stop it from hunting prey up to 4 meters long. Its bite has a very special design. The structure of its teeth and jaws lets Titanoboa really clamp down on the body of its prey, so there's no escape. When hunting, Titanoboa uses similar tactics to an anaconda or a boa. By that, I mean it uses its powerful muscles and weight to stop its prey from moving. 
It deploys all of its strength to take away the animal's energy, making it helpless. So Titanoboa is not only really speedy and agile, it can also fight its corner pretty well. It's definitely earned a point in the fighting skills section. Now it's time for the fight itself. Titanoboa never swims in the open sea, but here Megalodon has gotten lost and ended up in a shallow swampy area off the coast of Colombia. In water like this, Megalodon finds it even harder to move around. It could bite Titanoboa just once and the fight would be over. But because the shark moves so much slower than the snake, for now he doesn't get the chance to snap those enormous jaws. Titanoboa starts attacking Megalodon, but it can't do much damage to that thick skin with its sharp but very short teeth. Eventually, Megalodon gets its chance and ends the fight with a single bite. It turns out that those huge teeth were what really mattered in this competition. Chew on that for a while!